Our Gospel reading is found in the book of Luke, beginning at the 6th chapter, verse 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. Jesus went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples were there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to, tr to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how the ancestors treated the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Back in 2008, when the stock market had crashed and so many companies found themselves in turmoil, a person I knew came to talk to me. She had gone to work the day before and found the doors of her company locked. Unbeknownst to everyone, her job had declared bankruptcy and let all of their employees go. In a flash, her identity, paycheck, pension, and sense of security were gone. She walked into my office a devastated person with a mortgage, a car note, and two children in college. And then she looked at me with tears in her eyes and asked Anna, why has God stopped blessing me? It's a natural tendency to equate God's blessing with the state of our lives. We're blessed when we have, and we're not blessed when we don't. We're blessed when life is good and everything is going well, and we're not blessed when life turns sour and everything is falling apart. Most of us have felt that way at some point in time in our lives. Maybe some of us feel that way even now. It's a very human way of thinking. But the scriptures, the scriptures remind us that that is not how God understands blessings. Our state of being blessed is not based upon the things that we have or don't have. It is based upon our relationship to God. I'll tell you another story. There was an elder in my home church who was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. Whenever anyone came to visit with her, she would never let you leave without praying for you first. And when the pastor came to visit with her while she was in the hospital, she would give him a list of people in the hospital who she knew needed prayer and wanted him to stop and see them on his way home. Would she have considered herself forsaken by God because she was sick and dying? No. She had wrestled with God many a night when she found out she was sick. Yes, no one wants to leave their family, their friends, and the lives that they've lived. But through prayer and, and just being still and in the presence of God, she slowly came to the truth that there was nothing that could separate her from her Savior whose love was eternal and whose presence had always been so faithful in her life. It is that understanding 
that enabled her to know that she was blessed in spite of her circumstance because she knew herself beloved by God who had made an eternal home and prepared one just for her. And for her, until that day came, she was going to continue to be a blessing as she had been blessed. This elder was like that tree planted by the waters of which the prophet Jeremiah spoke. Although her physical body was withering, her spirit and her faith were planted firmly in the Lord. And like roots that drew its nourishment from the streams, she was sustained by God in whom she trusted to see her through it all. Like that tree whose leaves are green and it bears fruit even though drought and hard times threaten to come upon it, the witness of her faith touched so many people, including those who will never know her. On Sunday mornings, we worship God together. It is a sacred time in which we gather in the presence of God, we hear the word of God, and then we respond to God. When we leave from worship, it is with a sense that our life beyond this moment in time is lived in response to God. That is where our blessedness lies not in the things that we possess or the circumstances that we find ourselves. Our blessedness is found in being known by God. And in response, we live out that blessedness by being a blessing in the lives of others. This was the lesson Jesus sought to teach his disciples as he stood among the massive crowd of people who had come to experience the power of God that was leaving from him that day. Some had come to experience healing and others to be set free from whatever bound them. Some knew great hardship and suffering and others great privilege and status. But they had all come from far and near to touch Jesus. It's out of the sea of humanity that Jesus looked upon his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. Many people, including Christ's disciples, would have considered people who are poor or hungry or suffering or outcasts to be forsaken by God. They may have devised all kinds of reasons or understandings to explain or justify why God had not blessed those people. But Christ, Christ turns our understanding of blessedness upside down because from the perspective of the kingdom of God, what is will not always be. Christ lets us know that God sees those that are suffering in our world. God loves them, and God is intent on their thriving. God, they are not forsaken. They are blessed. The question is often, are we willing to live our lives rich toward God? so that all of us, including those of us who, may, who others may have turned their backs upon, may know just how loved we are. There is much to be done. We have only to look at the wealth gap, the food deserts, the education gap, and the health gap that currently exist even right here in Bergen County 
to know how far we are from God's preferred future for all of us. That is also why there are consequences for those that have. Christ says, But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This does not mean that God is only favorable to people that are suffering and those that are doing well are doomed. Instead, the woes come because those in this category can easily come to trust in themselves alone. They can be led to believe that they need only trust in their own strength or wisdom or ingenuity. Life is grand, and their prosperity and comfort and health and joys can easily be interpreted as a favored position above and beyond those that are struggling. All of these things have the ability to become distractions that can draw rather than draw us to God. But the truth is, all of this is temporary. What is will not always be. Yet God is eternal. The challenge is, can we put God first and prioritize the ways of the Lord especially during the good times, so that we have treasures in heaven and not solely on earth. We're meant to be a blessing as we have been blessed. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like the entertainer Dolly Parton's imagination library that she started in order to fight illiteracy in her rural small town in Tennessee. They send a book, a free book, every single month to an enrolled child from the time they are six months old to the time they are five years old beginning kindergarten. They started this many years ago, and now to this day, they are doing this in over five countries. And to date, they have gifted 1.9 million children with over 175 million books. What does it mean to bless as we have been blessed? It looks like six-year-old Marty Cox, our elder Marsha Battle's grandson, who received the toy when he was admitted to the hospital last year. The toy made him feel so much better after being afraid of being in the hospital that when he went home, he told his parents he wants to make sure that other children get toys too when they have to go to the hospital. His parents spread the word, and just recently, they delivered 700 toys to Hackensack Meridian Children's Hospital. What does it look like to be a blessing as you have been blessed? Well, it looks like our Sunday school children, who created cards and mailed them out so that some of our members would know that they were not forgotten. It looks like a friend of mine named Emmanuel, who takes an extra sandwich with him to work every day so that he has something to share with someone who's hungry. It looks like that phone call that's made, that card that's mailed, that email that's received, that text message that's given, that smile, that welcome, that greeting. We are all blessed by God who sent his son that in Christ we might have life and have it eternally. That is our great joy. May we, you and I, live our lives in response to God's blessing and be a blessing to others in the world today. Amen.